If you don't mind just telling us your first name and a little bit about your childhood. Yeah, so I'm Kendall Lassiter. Um, I was born in Texas, but raised here in Colorado in the Littleton area. Um, I grew up as an only child, and being an only child, it really helped me, you know, form a lot of creativity, um, a lot of imagination. <laughs> um, yeah, so I went to, you know, just schools in the Littleton area all my life, and yeah, it's kind of uh, where I started off. <laughs> What were your dreams as a child? I had a lot of dreams and aspirations and still do. Um, you know, I love uh, being around animals and being in nature and something I always wanted was to um, take photos of, you know, uh, the places I went, the people I met and uh, kind of share my perspective with the world, do art, things like that. So, um, yeah, a lot of dreams of traveling and um, things. Yeah. <laughs> Do you mind telling us a little bit about your relationship with your dad and how that relationship generally felt for you? Yeah, so, um, yeah, growing up, I was mostly, like, raised with my grandmother and my mom. So my dad was, you know, not really in the picture very much. He was he, always kind of traveling, you know, see me here and there. Um, and I also had a stepfather as well, so he was kind of a father figure to me. Um, but him and my mother split up when I was about eight years old. So um, didn't really have too much of a father figure in my life for most of that How time How did that feel up. for you? Mm, it was hard. It was confusing, you know, like not really knowing like when I'd see my dad or not really knowing if, you know, I'd have a relationship with my stepfather continuing on after their split, which um, three years after they split, um, we decided to continue um, our, our relationship and um, I still had connections with him and his family after that. Mm -hmm. But that would soon change, um, not too long from a couple years ago, actually. What happened? You would mend the relationship or you would... So yeah, we, we mended the relationship when I was about like 10 years old or 11 years old. And then from there, um, I would see him quite a bit and he ended up having a son uh, with another woman, so I kind of took him in as my little brother, and um, you know I was really close with his family and everything, just until about COVID hit. And um, growing up, you know, he was kind of an alcoholic, so um, that was also really hard. And me and him had a fallout, and uh, he pretty much attacked me like physically. And after that, um, I kind of shunned him from my life. How old were you? Um, that happened in 2020, so I was, <laughs> um, like 25, 20, 24, 25, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and it wasn't was too long What was that process ago. for you, the, like, say, this is it, and making that kind of stand? Yeah, I mean, um, after that physical attack, I mean, he pretty much, like, almost blinded me, like, there was a glass window that was punched into my face. And um, after that experience of the physical violence, because I was, I was dealing with a lot of verbal violence for a long time. Um, after that, I was like, you know what, that's it. Like, I'm not going to allow myself to be physically violated, you know, by, my, by anyone, especially, you know, a father figure, somebody I love. And it was really hard for me to move away from it because of my little brother, because of my family. Um, which they all kind of ostracized me after that. And they um, didn't talk to me, I would call them, and uh, they ignored my calls. So it was not only me losing my, um, my stepfather, it was also me losing an entire family. And that was, uh, that was difficult. How do yeah. you, do, how do you um, deal with that? Or how do you move forward positively with, with all of that? I mean, I think about the good experiences that we've had, and I still cherish those experiences. Um, but I realize that I just deserve better, that, you know, that, that bad moment doesn't define the whole relationship, but continuing moving forward, I don't consent to um, that kind of abuse. And I just have to remember, you know, what is important in my life. And, um, you know, I feel like someday my little brother, you know, he might reach out again 
he has autism uh, pretty severely, so um, I'm not sure, you know, if he, he will reach out, which is also a fear. Um, but I think someday he might, mm. and, uh, you know, we might get to reconnect. But at this time, I realize that it's just not in my better favor to have that open line of communication. What about your relationship with your mom and how that felt? It's always been really good with my mom. <laughs> um, my mom's an amazing person. She's very outgoing, very um, very crazy, <laughs> um, very loving, <laughs> good person. Um, she'd always throw me these crazy surprise parties and um, she just she's like the kind of person that walks into the room and gets you excited. You know, yeah. she she's like the light of the room she was like in, the entertainer um so having her in my life has been really great and mm. the relationship i have with her and my grandma i'm very close to them um, in so many ways and so growing up uh my mom you know she would get me on the weekends and uh because she had to work a lot to support me as a single parent and um my grandmother I stayed with her most of the time, so I actually lived at her house. Mm. So growing up, you know, I would sometimes stay at my dad's house occasionally, my, my birth father, and then I'd go to my mom's house, and then I'd stay at my grandma's house. So I kind of had like three homes that I would, mm. you know, be uh, continually moving to and fro from. What's the biggest thing you learned from your parents? Hmm. I think just how to be a loving and accepting person to no matter like no matter what hardships you face um, to come out of that stronger to be resilient and to be yourself no matter what can you tell us about your first love and how that felt <laughs> my first romantic love was when I was about 13 years old um, I met this person and we ended up getting into a long-term relationship right away and we had a two-year relationship mm -hmm. and it was really beautiful to have experienced that and you know people would say oh you're too young you know to to have this kind of relationship right now and it definitely concerned my mom and other people in my family they're like oh, wait <laughs> you're way too young to have a relationship like this but um, yeah it was a good experience how did that relationship feel it was nice. It was very freeing, very loving. Um, it was everything that I kind of wanted it to be. You know, it, it did end pretty abruptly and in a way that I wouldn't have liked necessarily or um, preferred. But overall, it was a really nice experience. Can you tell us about your first loss or heartbreak and how that felt? Well, I would say Romantically, it would be with that that my first boyfriend, that breakup, um, it being so sudden in the way that it happened, he kind of phys physically violated me in a way. And, um, you know, I, someone that you love and trust in that way and put everything, your heart and soul into that person and they just come and, you know, um, attack you in that way, you just never expect, you know, and especially someone who you know, said they love you, said they loved you, and they were, you were their everything. You just don't expect them to treat you in such a way. Um, so that was definitely a shock and a heartbreak for me. But I'd say like my very first heartbreak was probably, you know, with uh, everything that happened with my stepdad, how him and my mom like split up when I was pretty young. Um, that was pretty heartbreaking because I thought I would never see him or his family again. And uh, that was a rough point in my life as well. Who would you say first taught you love and how? Um, I just think from a very young age, you know, my parents being there, loving me, um, the animals that we had around the house. Uh, my grandma always had tons of dogs growing up. So I think between that love of my family, um, that's really just where I learned how to, you know, uh, be myself and love and, um, What's your definition of love? My definition of love is it's really just always there. It's it's pure. It's in within every single person. Um, I, I think it's the lo language of the universe. Mm -hmm. um, love is 
that divine beauty that's within us all. And um, every single person, I think it starts with themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and, and if everyone loved themselves, what kind of world would this be, you know? How's that love compare to what, to your perception of love when you were younger, to your perception of love now? I would say it's pretty unwavering. Um, it, you know, I think it expands over time. Mm. It changes form, but it's always still at the basic root. Can you tell us about a general good day for you? General good day is just when I wake up have some good breakfast, <laughs> just kind of connect with myself and just kind of go about my day and do the things I really love to do. Um, you know, I go out and I'll take some photos or I'll write something or, um, you know, go, go see someone who I really care about or, you know, and um, <laughs> I think um, the perfect day is just how you make it. It's mm. really up to you to create that perfect day and I think it starts when you when you wake up you just have that idea of like all right today's gonna be a good day what's a bad day look like for you and how do you get through that bad day I think you know bad days start and it could be one moment that leads you into feeling these negative emotions and to get over that you just have to take a breath and move on from the situation knowing that this too shall pass mm -hmm. that everything is temporary even pain what's a person or an event that shaped you good or bad i would say um, my husband's really been a huge light of my life um, really changed me in so many ways really opened and expanded my heart um, the love that we have is really unique and amazing and um, it's taken me to new places. So um, I'm really grateful for that love. What are some of those places? <laughs> um, I would say deep parts of my heart that I hadn't explored in the past that now I'm able to express with him. I'm able to open and um, let myself truly be who I am be free mm -hmm. and I think that's really great to have with someone to be able to fully be yourself and um, also now with our situation having that love for myself too because mm -hmm. you know I'll come I'll be alone at my house and he's not there and I've had to find that love within myself and and realize that you know even if he's not there or my family's not there and I'm just by myself like loving yourself is like so important that because um, you're always going to be there like you are always going to be your first love like you will always be your number one person mm. and um, I think we often forget that like when we're born and when we're young we we know that and I was really like okay with being alone being younger um, and I think over time you know I kind of let that slip away, but I'm kind of reconnecting to that now, of that comfort of myself. Um, do you want to talk more about that situation that you, you're in with just that whole, you know, I know, I know you, your husband, correct? Mm -hmm. He's in Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's that going? It, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's like every day is a struggle. Um, you know, I wake up and he's not there, and uh, I just have to kind of breathe and be like, all right, well, today is just going to be how I make it, and today's my day, and he's having his day over there, and, uh, you know, we, call, we talk to each other on the phone, and it's, um, it's really lovely to hear his voice, but it, sometimes, you know, it makes you sad to, to hear that person's voice on the other line and not be able to see them, to touch them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been really challenging uh, to not have that physical connection. But the spiritual connection is there and the emotional connection is always there. And um, that gives me a great comfort. 
know that like it's gonna be okay I know you you visit him often and you stay there you know for a month on end how's that when you actually get off the plane and get to reunite with the person you love it's amazing it's um like taking your first breath of air you see that person and you're just like oh my god it's you you're actually here like this is actually happening this is reality like you almost can't even believe it's happening <laughs> i'm almost in shock in a way like when i get into the into the airport i'm like okay <laughs> am i really am i really <laughs> gonna see him right now like yeah. is this <laughs> i get nervous i feel like it's the first time we met and that feeling comes about again it's almost like we fall in love again <laughs> after not seeing each other because we kind of change so, so uh <laughs> it's true that uh, separation or time makes the heart grow fonder. <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> um, what inspires you? So much. Um, the world, people, their um, resiliency through life, um, small moments. Um, just seeing how people love one another how they interact with the world, how, um, <laughs> sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> um, there you go, there you go, there you go. Okay. Um, yeah, what, you said, what inspires you? You were, you were on track, okay. <laughs> the world, people, small moments. Yeah. Yeah. Everything really inspires me. Um, mm -hmm. There's so many things in life that we come across every day that you can find inspiration in the, you know, the tiniest little thing, and that can lead to something really big and beautiful. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> inspiration's everywhere. What's been a humbling experience for you? I think going through all these painful experiences really humble you because they kind of give you a wisdom and create space for you to think about, you know, reality and um, how you often create your own reality um, based upon whatever comes at you. You can change that in any instant and um, create something new, which is really cool. But I think that being humble is a good place to be at. Being mm. calm, collected as much as you can. <laughs> Not guaranteed that you, you know, that you will be um, humbled all the time, but I think after so many life experiences happen, you just start to gain uh, new, newfound clarity. For this next question, if you can go in your mind and think, this life event can be mental, physical, or spiritual. Can you tell us about a time in your life that you can relate to the word war? I would say war could be many things. It could be inner turmoil, outer conflict, um, it can be, you know, relationships that you have with people. It can be the relationship you have with yourself. It could be an outer war of, you know, things actually happening around you as, as far as like, you know, we just went through an epidemic, that in itself, biological war, war happening on the planet with, you know, people that physically with guns and violence. Um, I think it, war shows up in so many ways, um, but the warrior is the individual, mm -hmm. and there's a beauty in how strong people are throughout whatever war they're facing. And um, Would you say you're a warrior? Yeah, everyone is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we all have our own battles to face, no matter what that battle is. Um, and that makes each of us a unique warrior um, with different strengths and abilities. But as a, as a whole, we need each other and to support each other and be warriors for one another. Because sometimes we fall and we think, you know, this is it, I, I can't go on. And another warrior will show up in your life and say, hey, get up. <laughs> It's not that bad. There's, there's so much to look forward to. You've got this. Mm. And then uh, you can kind of get up again and reignite that fire within and 
realize that you're stronger than you think. Can you tell us about a truly difficult time in your life, how it felt, how you endured? I would say recently, um, throughout the past um, two years-ish, I'm going through a lot. Um, it actually kind of started before COVID. Um, it all started with my, it was kind of like the succession of events mm -hmm. um, that just kept happening. And it was just like, it felt like it would never end, these different things that happened in my life. Um, it started with my two close cousins I kind of grew up with. Um, they were around my age. My, one of the, my, they actually died within about a week apart. Um, one of them died in a really terrible motor, uh, motorcycle accident. And the other one died um, with an accidental overdose with a drug laced with fentanyl. Um, so having the death of both of my cousins really just kind of... Um, changed my perspective on life and how fragile that is. And um, yeah, it was really hard losing them. And so that kind of started off the whole thing. And then um, the altercation happened with me and my stepfather. Um, and then right after that, um, COVID happened and sent the world into shock. And Right once COVID happened, um, it shut down me and my husband. We were going through um, this immigration process to try to get him legalized and try to get him here, get a green card and things. And so when COVID happened, it actually shut down immigration services for two years um, around and um, it pushed out our case and our interview. And so during that time, you know, he couldn't work, couldn't drive or anything. Um, so I kind of had to take that responsibility on and um, be the be our strength for a while and um yeah and we finally got our interview and things were looking up after a while and we were really excited um so we went to the interview and for some reason it was scheduled to be in rio which we thought was kind of weird because there's a consulate here in denver but um we got sent there and they denied him at the interview and gave him a 10-year ban on coming back to the United States. And uh, that was really hard, <laughs> knowing that like he wouldn't be able to come back home. And um, yeah, and then after that, I had to go get wisdom tooth surgery. And so um, I went to go get wisdom tooth surgery and they actually messed up and they um, nicked a nerve and I can no longer feel this whole part of my face anymore. And it's been like that for about a year now, um, or a little over a year now, about a year and a half. Um, so I was dealing with, you know, all of this loss, all of this pain all at once, you know, from my cousins to my stepfather to my husband to my physical face now. And, um, you know, after that, my, uh, my grandfather then passed away and, um, and during this whole process, um, my friends, my really close friends of like 10 years that I had, you know, I asked them for support. Hey, uh, can you guys, you know, write a letter for me and my husband uh, so that he could come back home? They, they were friends of mine that were very close to him and I, and um, asking them for their, their help, they actually denied helping me at all and um, turned their backs. A lot of them ghosted me, stopped talking to me altogether. Um, didn't write me letters of support, didn't help me. And so I felt really abandoned by my friends as well during that time, which was kind of the icing on the cake. And um, shortly after that as well, my cat passed away. <laughs> so it was just like one after the other of all this uh, craziness happening in my life. Um, a lot of people exiting my life in ways I never thought. and. Um, than me living alone and dealing with all of that pain. It was, a, it was a lot. That's enough to knock anybody all the way down. <laughs> um, how'd you, you know, in those moments, how, how'd you not give up? It was difficult. I wanted to give up a lot of times, but I realized that I deserved better. I was like, if I give up, what will that do for me? Where will that lead me? 
nowhere. I'll just be in this pit of despair forever. Like, do I really deserve that? Does anybody deserve to feel that way forever? <laughs> and um, after a while of, you know, sitting, crying, and releasing all these emotions, I just discovered that um, I need to change. I need to change this. I can't let this continue to take me down. Um, I need to pull through. Mm. And a, a really amazing person in my life um, that actually was there for me. So. <laughs> she's been th th there for me in my, my mind through um, this experience because she's one of the strongest people I know. She's um, actually a triplegic woman um, who is the mother of one of my good friends in high school. And um, she told me her story. And sometimes I would just think about her story. And that would give me strength to go through mine. Um, basically, I mean, she lost her husband due to a rare type of brain cancer. And then um, she was widowed and having to raise her two young sons. And um, then she was diagnosed with a rare flesh-eating bacteria that actually took away both of her legs and her arm. And after hearing her story of resilience, you know, it really um, gave me the motivation to push through. And it was actually crazy after another thing that happened during this whole time um, was I actually also lost my jobs um, and I lost my, my car got stolen along with all of my camera equipment and my, mm -hmm. my computer. And actually during the moment in which my car was stolen, I, I met her at a restaurant um, and I was just actually running in to grab myself some food to take home that day after work. And as I was running in to grab the food, she was there and I had a short conversation with her and she was just like, you know, I've always really looked up to you. I've always thought you're a beautiful person. And she just gave me this, this light and this hope. And then I went out and my car was actually, it was gone. And it was crazy that she was the person who showed up during this point in my life that felt so low, that felt so bad. And um, yeah, that gave me a lot of strength too, to realize like it's just a possession. It's just something that, you know, it's not my life. It's not a person I love. You know, it's just something, and I'm just gonna keep keep on going no matter what. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so for this next question, if you can go in your mind and think, this life can be mental, physical, or spiritual. Can you tell us about a time in your life that you relate to the word peace? I feel peace the most when I'm embracing someone that I truly love, or when I'm sitting there and just observing what's around me and no matter what environment I'm in, just taking that moment and breathing and looking around and just really being in the moment. I think peace is found in the here and now because that's all there really is. All we have is this moment. And when I connect to that, I feel that's all there, that all, that's all there is, mm -hmm. that, that peace and love is just here with us in the moment. And if we can connect to that, then it could really change the way we perceive the here and now. Can you tell us about a truly joyous moment in your life and how that felt? There's been moments when me and my family are listening to music and we're just all dancing around the room, having such a good time. I think those moments were really special to me. Um, and they happened all throughout my life, you know, as a kid, now, um, just all just kind of enjoying each other's company when we all come together um, in moments where, you know, it's kind of rare for my whole family to get together. And when we do, it's just a, it's a big party. So I feel like those are really joyous moments when we get to kind of leave behind the stresses of everyday life and just be together. It's pretty simple, but <laughs> I think that's what creates the most joy. What keeps you up at night? I would say not having my, my dog or my husband around. Um, you know, when he was deported, uh, my dog actually had super crazy separation anxiety and couldn't handle him being gone. So I had to have my grandma come and get my dog. And so I, you know, I no longer get to sleep with my dog or my husband by my side. And 
definitely keeps me up at night. <laughs> it's uh, hard to sleep. <sighs> it's hard to wake up sometimes. Sometimes I just want to stay asleep. <laughs> but uh, you make it through. What keeps you going every day? I would say my dreams of the future um, or dreams of what that day could look like for myself. You know, I, um, I try to stay self-motivated and continue thinking about all the things that I love. And, you know, sometimes I'll just go and make some really good food or do some art or go to meet up with someone who I really care about or, you know, go out in nature. And I think that that giving myself little things to do throughout the day kind of like motivates me to to continue on mm. to uh persevere and continue about the day one little baby step at a time <laughs> imagine you're in the hospital today with only hours to live what would be your regrets if any i would say not traveling the world as much as i wanted to um i've always really dreamed about going to as many countries as i can and as I have been to quite a, quite a few, but I would like to have more life experiences with that, meet more people, see different cultures. Um, yeah, I think that would be one regret that I would have. So you're alive and well. Do you feel that you can change that regret? Absolutely, yeah. You told me what your dreams were as a kid. What are your dreams now? I'd say they're really similar, almost the same actually. I feel like our dreams, they don't ever really change. Mm. They just, uh, they can shift a little and they can morph into different things, but I feel we're all like fundamentally, we all have like this dream that just stays alive with us throughout our entire life. And um, all my dreams, which are many, <laughs> um, are still there. And um, some of which, you know, I've seen and accomplished and others which I feel are just you know, right at the tip of my, the right at my fingertips. So, um, yeah, I, I feel our dreams can are pretty consistent. You're the co-author of your life story. What's your picture perfect ending? I envision myself surrounded by family, by friends, by children. Um, I envision myself growing older and more wise and. Um, grateful and really living in that gratitude. I uh, envision myself being content with the life I've lived.